The third section of chapter one talks about the seven testing principles. People over the past 50 years suggested some principles that are considered as guidelines for software testing. The first principle is testing shows the presence of defects, not their absence. What does that mean? Using software testing, we can show the defects that are present, but we cannot prove that there are no defects. When we do testing and we don't find defects, that does not mean that there are no defects in the software. So testing just reduces the probability of undiscovered defects remaining in the software. But even if you don't find any defects, that does not prove correctness, okay? Testing cannot be a proof of correctness. The second principle is exhaustive testing is impossible. Exhaustive testing means that you test everything. Testing everything all the combinations of inputs, all the preconditions that we need in our systems is not feasible. It is impossible. Except for trivial cases like a question with yes and no answers, this can be exhaustive tested, but most of the times we can't perform exhaustive testing. So what should we do? We should perform risk analysis at the beginning of our project. We should choose the proper test techniques and prioritize them while we are managing our test effort. The third principles, early testing saves time and money. The best thing in software testing is to begin testing as early as possible. So to find defects early, you should perform static and dynamic testing as early as possible. Static testing from the moment the requirements are written and dynamic testing beginning from writing the code and performing unit testing. Early testing is sometimes referred to as shift left because we shift the testing to the beginning of the project, to the left side. So this case of shift left or early testing reduces the costly changes, reduces the changes that will cost us a lot of money. Principle number four, defects cluster together. Here written 80-20, what does that mean? It means that most of the time in our life, 80% of your problems are caused by 20% of the causes. This is called the Pareto principle and it is applied also to software testing. So a small number of modules in your software are the reason for most of the defects that you discover while testing or that are not discovered and people discover them in operational environment. So you as a tester should predict the defect clusters and the actual defect clusters that happen while you are testing so that you perform risk analysis with this information to focus your testing effort. Principle number five, beware of the best side paradox. Any best side that is used, if you use it over and over again, it will become weaker and weaker in killing insects. This is the same for software testing. If the same tests are repeated over and over again, those tests will no longer be effective. They will not find any new defects. So to detect new defects, you should change your testing, change your test cases and your test conditions, and also change your test data. If you do this, you will find more defects. So tests are no longer effective at finding defects like pesticides are no longer effective at killing insects. But also, pesticide paradox sometimes is useful in automated regression testing. Regression testing is that you change a part of the software and this part causes changes or bugs in other parts of the software. We prefer always to do regression testing in an automated way. So in this case, the test cases that are written in the history will be reused and hopefully they will not find new defects. If they don't find new defects, this is a good thing. We don't want them to find new defects. If they find new defects, that means that the system has regressed and there is a regression and we should solve these problems. This is only applied to automated regression testing, not normal testing. Principle number six, testing is context dependent. Testing changes from one field to the other, from one project to the other. So testing is done differently in different contexts. For example, safety critical softwares are tested completely different from e-commerce mobile apps because in safety critical software, maybe in a hospital, someone may die because of our failure or our bug. But in e-commerce mobile apps, no one will die, okay? We will lose some money and the problem can be fixed with no loss of human lives. Another example, testing in agile projects is done completely differently than testing in sequential lifecycle projects. The last principle of software testing is 
absence of error is a fallacy. What does that mean? It means that you think that there are no errors. Some organizations or some managers expect that you as a tester you can perform all the testing and find all the possible defects. Principles 1 and 2 tell us that this is impossible. You as a tester you cannot find all the possible defects. You can only find most of the defects. So this is a fallacy. Another fallacy is that you expect that when you find defects and fix them or you find a large number of defects this will ensure the success of your system no why because for example if you test the requirements and fix all the defects found your system still can be difficult to use your system still might not fulfill the user's needs and expectations also your system might be inferior compared to other competing systems. What does that mean? It means, for example, you are making a social media, a new social media. You reviewed the requirements, you tested the software, and on the release, no one used it. Why? Because there is Facebook. So your competing system is very high in quality and you are inferior to it. Okay, you need to work more on your quality.